This video is brought to you by Bandwork. Yo, do you think I should buy the Series 9 or the Ultra 2? Just get the Ultra 2, double the battery life, plus it's super durable. Just get the Series 9, it's almost twice as cheap, plus it's pretty much the same watch. Just go for the Ultra 1, dude, it's almost the same price as the Series 9. Just get a normal watch and get it over with. <laughs> I shouldn't have asked. Given the upcoming holidays and inevitable discounts, I get a lot of questions from people asking me which Apple Watch they should buy. The Apple Watch Ultra 1, the Ultra 2 or the Apple Watch Series 9. To clear the air, let me quickly clarify what the differences are between the first and second generation Ultra. As the most expensive Apple Watch out there, the Ultra is of utmost interest to people knowing they can grab the first generation with a pretty decent discount. So we have a brighter display on the Ultra 2, the S9 processor that allows the on-device Siri and of course the double tap interface feature. Does that justify picking one Ultra or the other? Nope. Sure, double tapping is nice and all, but it is a feature that many will find use of sporadically. Furthermore, it is something that most older Apple Watches can simulate as well, with the help of an accessibility feature that can be enabled. So right now I'm wearing the Apple Watch Series 4, which doesn't have the double tap feature. But if you go to accessibility, first of all settings, then accessibility, you can enable... Where are you? Oh, there it is. Assistive touch on and now you can do clinching and then you can do pinching to move around. In terms of speed and performance as well as battery life, both Ultra watches act pretty much identical. They are carbon copy in terms of weight and looks to the point that if I place them next to each other without any bands, you'll have really hard time distinguishing which is which. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? Other than that, on-device Siri is quicker on the Ultra 2, yet equally clunky, so it's not worth considering it as a reason to upgrade. With all that being said, if you're into larger watches and you want the best that Apple has to offer, feel free to grab the first generation Ultra if you find a decent discount. So far, I've stumbled upon prices of the Ultra 1 similar to the Series 9, which leads me to that very topic. Should you pick the Ultra 1 over the Series 9? Everything from both Ultra comparisons applies here as well, where we have identical brightness levels between both devices. 2000 nits. Sure, the 9 has on-device Siri again and double tap feature, but it can't really compete with the battery life and ruggedness of the Ultra. Personally, I'd go for the Ultra if that is my dilemma and your choice here should be based on looks and aesthetics alone, as long as we're talking, you know, decent prices on the Ultra 1. So let's talk about Series 9 versus Ultra 2. The Series 9 with GPS and cellular is $529, while the Ultra 2 is $799. The reason I didn't pick the standard GPS without cellular Series 9 is to make the scale equal as all Ultra models come with cellular option. In that case, we have about 35% price difference. The question is, does 35% price difference justifies watches that share over 90% of their internals and features? Well, let's see where they overlap. Both are perfect companions to the iPhone and even the Mac. You can take calls, glance and interact with notifications, reply to messages, take notes, unlock your Mac, authenticate, pay and so much more. In terms of sports features, things are very similar as well with the exceptions of diving where the Ultra is in a league of its own. With the help of new and improved internals, there are now options to precision find your iPhone 15 just like an AirTag and that works on both watches. Regardless of which Apple Watch you go for, only the band choice will help you stand out. As an Apple Watch Ultra user myself, most of the time I move around with Bandworks Model G1S, which is a metal bracelet built to perfection. It gives the Ultra that extra presence, making it look much more substantial. It comes in a darker version called Anthracite, which on the other hand matches the Series 9 ideally. Another masterpiece is any choice from Bandworks Artline collection, like this handmade one based on an artwork 
were horn players by the artist Jean-Michel Basquet. From more subtle choices to special edition drops like this Carrera band that is one of 649 made from the interior leather of a 1977 Porsche 911 Carrera, Bandwork offers products that you can be sure you won't see elsewhere. Rather than offering conventional discounts on Black Friday, Bandwork decided to celebrate Neon Friday, shining a spotlight on German craftsmanship by introducing a Neon Friday collection. It will be available in the first link in the description below and on November 24th, only on that day. So go ahead and grab one or pick a timeless one from their other collections. So what are the differences between the Series 9 and the Ultra 2? Well, the most obvious difference is of course the size. The Ultra boasts a 49mm case versus 45 or 41mm version on the Series 9. If you want a smaller Ultra, that won't be an option. Although, I'm a big fan of women wearing larger watches, for example. So if you indeed need something smaller, the Series 9 at 41mm is the way to go. The Ultra feels a lot more substantial on the wrist and you'll know you're wearing a large watch pretty much the entire time, while the Series 9 can blend in a lot more seamlessly, especially if you pair it with a lightweight band. While on the topic of size and casing, the Ultra is made from titanium just like the iPhone 15 Pro, which makes it a lot tougher, being able to withstand the occasional you know, bumps and scratches. In fact, my Ultra 1 has been through a lot compared to most other watches I have, and it has shown almost no signs of wear and tear. Of course, that is possible also with the inclusion of sapphire front glass compared to Ion X on the Series 9, where if you do heavy workouts, you know, climbing or something else, I'd recommend either a bumper or at least a screen protector. On the Ultra, the screen is not as exposed on the Series 9, plus it's sapphire and titanium, so you'll care less about, you know, damaging it. In terms of display and size, both the 45mm and the 49 are equally comfortable to interact with, where the Ultra gets a slight advantage in my opinion thanks to the flatter profile and a tad few additional pixels, something you can further appreciate in the Ultra's additional complications. The Ultra is also brighter, reaching a peak brightness of 3000 nits compared to 2000 on the Series 9, which in reality will make no difference to most people. Both watches get bright enough for 99% of occasions unless, let's say, you are a lifeguard that works at the beach all day and you're constantly under bright sunlight wearing sunglasses. Aside from casing, another physical difference between the two watches is the existence of the action button on the Ultra, which is very similar to the action button on the iPhone 15 Pro. This button is mappable and can serve multiple purposes like, you know, stopwatch, making a waypoint, starting a workout, or triggering a shortcut. While on the topic of shortcuts, you should definitely check out my ultimate iPhone home screen episode where I show you how you can create your own action button menu on the iPhone. I'll link that video at the end of this one. The button also works with some third-party apps by the way. While working out, if you want to pause your workout on the Apple Watch, all you have to do is pinch the two buttons and then pinch them again to resume. On the Series 9, <laughs> It is very similar. You just use those two buttons right here. At this point for me, by far the biggest difference between those two watches is the battery life. The Series 9 is marketed to have 18 hours, while the Ultra is up to 36. In reality, you can think of it this way. The Series 9 is a one-day watch, while the Ultra is a two-day battery life watch. Both watches come with USB-C fast charger in the box, which especially on the Series 9 is the way to go if you want to have the watch tracking your data for the most part. Most other third-party chargers take forever. So, choosing between the two watches comes down to five factors in my opinion. Price, looks, better life, comfort, and durability. So I created this little table to help you make the right choice. If we consider the price point as a leading factor based on your taste and comfort level, things are very much in favor of the Series 9 as you can equip it with a bumper or protector to bring it close to the Ultra in terms of durability. If money is not of concern, and you're looking for a smaller watch altogether, then the Ultra is again out of the question, as it only comes in 49mm and it is significantly chunkier and heavier to wear. If you like larger watches, however, you'll appreciate a lot more how the Ultra feels on the wrist while wearing it hassle-free knowing that it will withstand the occasional accidents. On top of it, the Ultra will change your charging habits having to charge it every two, two and a half days. I prefer to keep the always-on display on my Ultra off because first of all, I like the looks of it, and second of all, it adds additional maybe 30% more battery life. To turn the always on display off, all you have to do is go to settings, then display in brightness, 
and always on is right here. Personally, I've always been a fan of larger watches, so the Ultra is the choice for me. However, I had a moment in time when I had a stainless steel Apple Watch, which I think looks classy AF. But if we talk stainless steel, prices are very much equal to the Ultra. By the way, with the latest version of watchOS, the swipe up gesture from the home screen is replaced with something called Smart Stack. If you have double tapping enabled, you'll be able to trigger it by pinching your fingers. The smart stack can come in very handy, but only if you customize it to your needs. To learn how you can customize it and how you can take the most out of your Apple Watch, regardless of the model, go check out this video and this guide here. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is Z, over and out.